Uh, welcome back all of you, Nana here, and then we are into the next day's program on this uh, fusion inventory implementation. So we are now continuing our activity. So now, today we are going to begin inter-organization transfers, actually. We are going to begin inter-organization transfers. So... I will not go there. Open up my what happens uh, this thing. So if you go to this place and then open up my CU SCM training and then open up my fusion inventory documentation, there is one document called material transfers. EM. If you press it, it will come. Fine. So we have one material transfers documentation under fusion inventory documentation. Let me open it up. So we are opening it up. So material transfers is the documentation I am opening up. Fine. Double click on it. Let me open it up. You're opening it. So in the industry, uh, when you're working in the industry, what you're going to do is uh, an inventory org is logical in nature, and then it'll have many, many sub-inventories. Sub-inventories are the physical containers of material actual. Items are contained in the sub-inventories actually. So uh, whenever you perform a transfer between two sub-inventories, it is known as what? Sub-inventory transfers. Right? Between two sub-inventories, known as a sub-inventory transfers. And then I am now having an office in Bombay and then I have an office in Madras. So when I transfer from Bombay to Madras, this is called inter-organization transfers. And then the third type of a transfer is what? The supplier is going to supply material to you. You are going to receive in one of the sub-inventories. Fine. So we'll be receiving it. And then whenever something is defective or repair, we are going to return it back to the supplier through a transaction called return to supplier or return to vendor. So one of the transactions you will perform. Both of them, RTS and RTV are same only. So through which what happens, it will be done. And then uh, we ship the product to the customers now. Fine. One of the sub we are going to ship it to the customers. And then uh, once when the customer returns back any defective material, it will come back as what? RMA, return material authorization. And similarly to the manufacturing area, work in process is nothing but a manufacturing. So we will now issue a material from one of the sub to the manufacturing as a raw material issue. And then we will now receive the material after the manufacturing is complete as a finished good actually. So all the five are bidirectional. Can somebody say yes to me <clears throat> that you understood? Yes, yes sir. sir. Good, good, good. Fine. Now, we are going to begin our inter-organization transfers. That is a transferring it between two orgs. We are going to transfer it between two orgs. So we are going to begin our activity of inter-organization transfers today. <coughs> now, go ahead, <coughs> now, if you go there, I have press I. So you have one IOT in-transit document. Under the fusion inventory documentation, we have one IOT in transit documents. Fine. Double click on it. I will open up the IOT in transit document. Fine. Double click on it. You are going to open it up. So now, uh, let us say this is going to be Hyderabad. And then this is going to be Secunderabad. So I am now manufacturing my cabinet in Hyderabad. <laughs> and then I am going to perform a spray painting in Secunderabad actually. So I move the material between Hyderabad to Secunderabad. The time taken is 15 minutes for me to move on the road. And then the cost involved is 250 rupees. So if the time taken and then the what's called your uh, uh, your time taken as well as the cost of transfers are negligible, we will now perform a direct organization transfers. Fine. We will now perform a direct organization transfers. So we go there and then we will now first of all perform a direct organization transfers. So it will be what happens, you go there, we will now create an item now. Fine. We will now go there and then create an item. So let us now first of all log into the system and then we will now create an item actually. So we already created two items actually. We will now create the third item for a direct organization transfers. So click on signing. We are going inside. You go to the star icon and then go to the product management, product information management. In the star, we already saved it now. Leave it. You go there. And then click on this and then go there. Click on the create it. So click on create it. I'm now going to create on the first org. So go there. There's a T10. If you write T10, the master org will be coming automatically. If I go there, the item class is what T10. You put your item class over, you know, if I click on it. So the template will be coming. If I click on OK, which this is now complete. It's not giving a warning. It doesn't matter. Ignore this warning. We are going to see this warning a bit later, actually. This warning message, what exactly it is, we'll now see it later. If I click on S, no, it is now completed. Mm -hmm. So item is what? T10. Fine. So 0, 01 is my first average costing. And then 02 is my standard costing. So this will be 03 now. Fine. 
it will be 0, 3. So always have a habit of numbering it continuously. Fine. Underscore. I will not say direct or transfer. This is a direct document. So you go there. I will not make a perform a direct organization. Transfer. I will not take a copy. Put on the description. No, fine. Put on the description <clears throat> and then go there. So this is a 0, 3 is an item which is for direct organization transfers where the cost of transfers between the source org and destination org is negligible actually. Both the time taken as well as the cost involved in the transfers are negligible. Then we will be configuring this as a what happens your interoc parameter as what direct organization transfers. So go that one. I will not go there. I will not go to the specifications. And then we have already given a list price for the item of the purchasing. We have already given a list price. We will keep it as a chain of the matter. And then directly what happens? You go there. You go to the associations and then let me associate my child arm. You go to actions and then go to select an act which we are now associating your child arm. So T10 is the one. Enter in now. So T10 is the one. I enter it. I will not choose it my child arm. If I click on apply and then click on done. It is not done. So the item is now created. T1003 is ready. Are you clear? So give a save and close. Drop down and then give a save and close. Then we are saving it now. The item is now created. Now I will now right click and then duplicate. Go there to go to the top. Right click and then duplicate. Now the second tab region is now getting opened. So we are going to perform interop transfers. So go there. I will now click on the star icon. I go to the inventory overview. I go to the inventory overview. So once when I go into the inventory overview, so now here what happens? My org has to come now. Fine. It is coming as all actually. So what I do is I go there, click on this. And then I will now perform what? Inter-organization transfers. If I click on it, you're now going to perform an inter transfers. So go to the create inter transfers. Right? Click on the create inter transfers. We are going to get inter transfers. The organization is what? T101. Uh, so, so click on OK. So from 101 to 102, we are going to make a transfer. So the organization is there in the top. Right? If it drop down, nothing will come actually. So nothing is going to come. So no organization is coming. So what I do is I will now right click and then duplicate. So the first activity is to what? We have to establish the network as direct actually. <clears throat> when I want to transfer material between the source to destination, the inter-org parameters must be set to direct actually. So in this place, whatever I go there, click on it. I will now go to the setup and maintenance. I will now go to the setup and maintenance. Click on it and then you go to the search and then you go to manage inter-org parameters. Manage percentage fine. Inter, inter percentage org percentage fine parameter percentage. So you go to the manage inter -org parameters fine. Click on the hyperlink of it now fine. Click on the hyperlink of it and then go there. Click on plus. And then I will now put my first from organization T101. Give it up. It is a T102 fine. Go there is what else. And then I don't put the tick mark here. No? Fine, the transfer order is not enabled. So there are two methods of this thing there. So once with the cost of a transaction and then the time taken for transaction is negligible, we will not make it as a direct. <laughs> Distance, I will not say 25 kilometers. And then kilometers, fine. It is a K and a K and then M and then give a tab. No, fine. KM, I will not give a tab. Coming as a kilometer. KM and then give a tab, it will be coming. And that's it, fine. Go there. So the movement of material between these two orgs is direct action. Even though it is going to take some 15 minutes, the end client says that is negligible for me. So we are now declared this. Now, if I click on OK, fine, there's no doubt. And then having defined the network, the interlock parameters between the source of to disconnect as in the direct, in the right hand side top, you give a save and close, remember, this is a must actually. So we have to give a save and close, then only what happens, it gets saved actually. Now we'll now go to the previous screen and then click on cancel. Click on cancel. And then I will again come back here. I will again come back here and then perform this. <clears throat> I will again try to perform the inter transfers between these two orgs. <clears throat> so click on it. I will now go to the manage inter organization tra transfers. No more inter transfers. I go there. Create inter organization transfers. Go there. Drop down. Now also nothing will be coming. Now it's coming actually because what happens? Uh, the destination orgs the receiving parameter must be set. Actually, if the receiving parameter is not set, it will not come at all. So the receiving parameter has to be set. No go there. I will now see whether it is not set or not. Manage receiving parameters. Manage percentage fine. Receiving percentage fine. Para percentage. So here, if you go there, if you go and then click on the manage receiving parameter <clears throat> and then change the R right, to the destination R and right, click on yes, now right, click on change R and then I will not change it to what? T102 and then click on OK. Now, if you see, this is uh, not set at all. The, 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 all the star mark entry has been, we are not set it, but since it is not going to come via gate now, 
So here, whenever you transfer it, it has to come via gate of the organization, actually. In a direct talk, there is no transaction involved, and so it will be going and then hitting the inventory straight away. It will not go and then hit the inventory straight away. So now, what happens is there is no receiving parameter required for this direct organization transfer. For the direct organization transfer, it is not required at all. And now, what happens? You go there. I will now, uh, you go to manage inventory org. So the management has told that the stock should never go to negative at all. You go to the manage inventory org task. Click on the hyperlink on the manage inventory org. Let me query the inventory orgs. Is the T10? And then click on search. No, I click on search. You are not going to query for it. So I will not go there. In the source organization, click on edit. Source organization, click on edit now. Edit, edit, take on. I'm editing it. Selecting it and editing it. So click on the next in the top. I will not say negative balances are not allowed. <clears throat> so allow negative balances. I will not remove it. So we cannot drive the inventory negative at all. It's not giving you a warning. <clears throat> it doesn't matter. So inventory stock should never go negative at all. So click on save and close. So the negative, what happens has been removed now. Now we'll now go on and see the stock of it. Right, right click on the duplicate. We'll now have a look at the stock. Right? Negative quantity is not allowed on the first source org actually. Now I go there, click on the star icon. I go to the inventory overview. I opened up one more tab region. There I go and then see the stock. Now it is T102. I'm going to order. I will now go to the what? Item quantities, manage item quantities. So go there. I will now go to the manage item quantities. No, I go to the manage item quantities. And then here, what happens is change the org to my first org now. Right? The T101 is my org. I click on OK. I now change it to my first org. Here I will now go and then query my item. So go there, click on it. So I've changed the org to 101 now. Right? I will now go to the manage item quantities. And then here I will now query what? T10, right, 03, and then give a tab. The item will be coming. So if you make a search, there is no stock at all. Now, if you want to transfer 10 quantities to the destination, it will not allow because inventory cannot be driven negative at all. So you go there, click on it. In this place, what I do is I will not give it done now. <clears throat> now I will not try to make a create an interop transfer. So go there. So drop it down. We are already in the place now. Right? Choose the all. So it is going as direct organization transfer. So the source, fine. Right? You'll now say um, some source, fine. Right? Your source, Babel number is something. And then a carrier, you drop down if the carrier is coming. Otherwise, we have to define a carrier actually. Nothing is coming. You leave it now. So, number of packing units is three. So, three units, I'm not sending it by a carrier actually. And then you go there, click on plus. In the plus, what happens? I will not put the item. So, I want to put the item. Fine, go there. If you put T10, fine, zero, 03, and then give a tap, item will not come at all. So for the item to appear, the item has to be assigned to both the source and destination. So only when the item is assigned to both the source and destination, then only we can transact it. We have assigned it to only source, fine, give a cancel now. I will not go there. I will not right click and then duplicate. I will not right click and duplicate. One more tab region, I'm opening it up. So let me assign the item, what happens to the destination now. And click on the star icon. I go to the product information management. I will not click on it. I will not go to the browse items now. Fine. Any doubts, please stop and ask me. If you are having any doubts, please ask me now. So go to the browse items and then let me query the third item. <coughs> I'm not going to query the third item. No, frankly, is what T10, fine, 03, and then click on search. No, frankly, on search. I'm not querying for it. So go there. Here, what happens? It has been assigned to only one org. If we go right now, it has been assigned only org. So I have to assign it to the second org also. Let me open up the master and assign it to the second child. So click on the hyperlink on the master. Click on the hyperlink on the master. I will now go to the associations. Let me associate to the child, another child, or actions. And go to the help so the item must be assigned to both the source and destination. Remember, then only we can transact on the item. So click on apply and then click on done. It's not done. So everything is not done. Okay, of course. <clears throat> so now done. Go there, click on it. I will now give what? A save. I click on it. I will now give a save. So now save and close. So once when you perform a transfer, what happens? I'm not going to give what the values. No, thank you. It's not done. <clears throat> now I will not go to the create interorganization transfers. Now if you go there, I will not clear the record. No, fine. I will not go there. I will not delete this line. Delete this line, and then add another line. Fine. Delete it, and then add another line. Fine. Go there. The T ten zero three, and then give it up. Now the item will come. So if you expand it slightly, it will show you. So go there. I will not. What happens? Available quantity is zero. If I go there, I will not choose what FGS. So from the FGS, what happens? The destination is what? 
there is a T101 is the source. If you go there, the destination sub inventory is what? Give a search fine. It is not there at all. So we have not even created a sub inventory of the destination. So we have to create a sub inventory now. So we'll go there. I will not go to the place fine, but right click and then duplicate. We have to create a sub inventory of the destination or fine. What else? We go there. So click on that or I'll go there and then click on the setup and maintenance. And then I will now go to what? Click on the task list and then go to the search. And then we are now going to create the sub inventories in the destination or for the manage fine. Sub percentage fine. Look up percentage. So go to the manage sub inventory located fine. So click on that manage sub inventories and located. We're going over there. If you want. Click on. So I will not change the R2 second R now. Click on change R. I will not change it to my second org. No. Fine. T102 is the one. Fine. Give it a So the second org is not having any sub inventories. So if you don't have any sub inventories, we cannot transfer to the second second org at all. So every org is logical in nature. You go there. Each and every org is logical in nature. So the sub inventories are the physical containers of material. Everything must have a sub inventory. Right? Sub inventory. So here we don't have any sub inventory at all. So we are now creating the sub inventory over here. Fine. Go to place. Fine. Click on plus now. So here the code is what T102 underscore FGS underscore one second arm. So take a copy of it, put in the description now. And then you go to the what's called location T10 and then give it a tap. It will be coming now. Okay. Lock two is coming. And click on save and close. So the location is now click on save and close. And similarly, we will now create on stage also. Click on it. You will not get on stage. Click on plus now. Fine. So go there. I will now say T102 underscore stage underscore 2. It is not having sufficient characters actually. I will now say STG underscore 2. Stage 2. I am not ready. So there, first one is the 1 and then this 2. No, fine. No, not. The location is what? T10 and then give a tap. It will be coming now. So click on save and close by which we have now completed the creation of two sub inventories on the destination now. Now, if I go to what my interop transfers, if I drop down and then make a search, it will be coming. Thank you. Because now search. Now we are just created, it will be coming. Thank you. Now search no fine. We'll not show both of So let me order T102 FGS1. I will not. So from 101 FGS1, I am now transferring it to 102. And we have a zero stop. Fine. If you go for 10 quantities, what happens? It will not say D. What up, Unga? It is an error actually. Because this source org do not allow the transactions to drive the inventory negatively. You cannot drive the inventory. You cannot drive it inventory negative. So available quantity is only zero. It must be more than zero. So that is not one thing. So what you do is you will now go to what manage uh, setup and maintenance. I will now go to the manage inventory or I will now go to the manage inventory or fine. No uh, manage inventory or no fine. Manage inventory or fine. entering. No. I will now go to the manage inventory organization. I will now query the organization fine with a T10 and then query for it. I will now go to the first org. No. Keep my cursor on the first top, click on the edit, and then I go to the next here in the top. Now, fine, click on the next in the top. So, here I will now allow the negative balances. So, certain companies do not allow negative balances at all. Now, what happens? Let us say a supplier has to supply me a laptop and a carry case. <clears throat> so, we have ordered 10 laptops along with the 10 carry case. It is a very urgent requirement. So, we asked him to supply the laptop immediately. Carry case he can supply tomorrow or day after tomorrow. So that guy has now given me the laptop. Fine. The carry case will now come only tomorrow or day after tomorrow. Now tell me, without the carry case, the laptop will work or not? The laptop and power supply has given, but the carry case, he says that you will now give it only tomorrow or day after tomorrow because there is now still under manufacturing. So it will not give. So without a carry case, will the laptop will work or not? My question. Anybody? Yes, sir. Yes. It will work because carry case is not required for the laptop to work actually. But it is part of supplies. So once when you order it, you have to give it up. So in such cases, what happens? Uh, we will not make a result. Yeah, right, Hello? Tell me. Yeah, yeah sir. Continue. Please continue, sir. Ah, what is it? Please continue, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Fine, yeah. So now the supplier has now supplied 10, 10 laptops. Now. So what he will do is uh, he will not receive in the system at all. The inventory in charge will not receive it because he has not given the carry case. So the physical stock is 10 laptop and then there are no carry case. But what happens? The actual stock is 10. So the, the system quantity is zero, but the actual quantity is 10. So in this case, if the inventory org is no, what happens? You know, is not showing you zero. 
And then here, if I am now, what happens? You go to the manage uh, item, manage inventory organization. I will now put it and then click on save and close. Now I can very well drive the inventory negative. And go there. On. Previously, it was giving error. Now, if you go there, I will now delete this line. I will now create another line. It was giving error. Thank you, contrast. No point. Let me add the line. So T10, right? 03, and then give a tab. So I will now, you know, having zero, fine, drop it down. I will now choose what the source are in this one. What happens? I will now choose the destination sub inventory. And go back to one, you know, one zero two. Fine, go back. If I give for 10 commodities and give, previously it was giving error, now it will now give a warning. Now a warning message is coming. You were center transaction, error is coming. Now tell me why error is still coming now. We have already enabled what this one now. Fine. In this place, uh, what happens in this inventory or we have already made it as what? Allow negative quantities is elevated. Now, why is still showing an error? No, tell me what I have to do now. If such is coming, what, what I have to do? Anybody? What I have to do if the error is still coming? No, it allows negative quantities actually. So, what I have to do? It's a simple thing now, fine. I have not told you n number of times. So, we simply click on OK. OK. Yeah. What I have to do? So in such case, it is not sensing the setups I have made on the inventory or so what to do now. Okay, okay. The, the allow negative quantities has been enabled on the inventory or but the system is not sensing it. So what I have to do? You have to log out and log in. Clear? Whenever your setup is not yes, sensed sir. by the system, you please log out and log in. Fine. Give a cancel now. Give a cancel. Yeah. 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 Log out and log in. Now the system will now sense the change actually. For the system to sense the change, what happens? You better log out and log in. Sign out and sign in is the best practice whenever your setup is not sensed by the system. No. I will now close all of the tabs. Close everything, close everything, close everything, close everything, close everything. Go there. I will now log in again. So this must be a usual practice. Whenever the setup is not sensed, what happens? You go there, log out and log in. Then go there, click on it. I will now go to the place and click on the what is called star icon. Now I go to the inventory overview. Fine, go there, count. If you go there and then try to perform a transaction, if I click on it, I will not perform an interop transfer. I will not perform an interop transfer. Click on it. Go there. So I will now say create interorganization transfers. Go there. It is what T. I will now say 101. And click on it. Go there. So drop down when destination or that will be coming. And then go there in the direct organization transfers. You can fill up all these information. Fine. They are not mandatory, but it is uh, preferable to fill up all the information. Then click on plus. And then go there. I will not put the item. Fine. T10.03. And then give a tab. And then I will not put the sub inventory over here. Fine. <coughs> sub inventory is the destination sub inventory is not fine. Now, if you put 10 quantities, it will only throw a warning and then no error message. Because our available stock is zero. And then we are now transferring 10. Because physically we have it. That is why we are transferring it actually. So give a tap. <clears throat> it is not giving a warning. Previously, it, it gave an error actually. Fine, go there. So if you want to continue, click on yes. <clears throat> so click on it. And then here, what happens? You go there. I will now click on the edit details. I will now give the cost for this. Click on the edit details. I am not going to give the cost of transfers. I'm not going to so the transaction quantity is there. You go there. So here, what happens? I will now say the item cost will be having. You know, we have will be having an item cost. <clears throat> and then afterwards, what happens? We will have what? Get a yeah, shipping cost. Now. If you go and then see this, now fine. When you ship it from the one to two now. <clears throat> Hello, I'm in a class actually. Can you call me at around four o'clock? Oh, four o'clock. So here, what happens? It is called transit expenses actually. In the transit expenses, we will now have the freight charges to the uh, as, uh, to the carrier driver, packing and forwarding, transit insurance, taxes, toll tax, etc., etc. Everything put together is the transit expenses. So we'll now go there. And then we will now give what the shipping cost is what 10. Okay. So we are now given the stars. Now I click on OK. It is not done. So click on that. And then click on submit by which what happens there. The whole 10 quantities will be immediately be reflected on the destination on. The whole quantities. As soon as you make a direct organization transfers, it physically takes 15 minutes, but in the system, it will be getting updated immediately. Because there's a direct organization transfers. The cost of transfers and the time of transfers is negligible for them. I go there. So click on submit. So by which what happens? It will be getting reflected immediately on the destination. Your transaction process is no choose fine. Go there, click on it. And then you will now go there. After 15 minutes only, it is going to arrive. And if you go there, click on it. You will now go to the manage item quantities. And then how to go there? On the manage item quantities. And go there. So item is what? T10. Fine. 03. 
and then give it a the item and then go there. So click on search, it will not show you a stock of minus 10 actually. It is a minus 10 actually. So here itself, I will not change the R to second R. I will not change the R to second R. And then click on search, no fine. In the top, it is only one not one, but here I'm changing it. Here it is plus 10 actually. So the customer says, the end client says that even though it takes 15 minutes for me to realize the item on the destination R, the, this is now getting updated immediately, it is okay for you. Because the cost of transfers and time taken for the transfers are negligible actually. Got it now? Right? So this way it works. Okay. So this completes direct organization transfers. Now we are going to go for in-transit transfers. Let us say this is going to be Madras and then this is going to be Bombay. So it takes around four days for you to move the material between the source to destination actually. And then the cost involved is appreciable actually. Fine. They may even charge you around 5,000 rupees for transfer between Bombay and Madras. Right? So 5,000 and 10,000. So the cost involved in the transfers is appreciable. The time taken is also appreciable. In which case what happens is we will now establish the shipping network as what? In transit actually. The interrog parameters will be changed to in-transit. Go that one. will not go there and then make it as in-transit. So go there. I will not right-click and then duplicate. And then I will not go to the manage interrog parameter. So click on it. Go there, click on it. I will not go to the setup and maintenance. And then I will not go to the interrog parameter. Fine. Click on it. And then click on search and find manage interorganization parameters. Manage percentage main. Inter percentage main. Org percentage fine, parameter percentage. So I go to the manage intro parameters and click on it. <clears throat> and then go there. Query for the source or fine, T101, T101. And then click on search. The source is sufficient to make a search. No, fine. I'm going to change it from direct to in transit. No, fine, click, on. Fine, click on it. So whenever the cost of transactions, the time taken of transactions, or both are appreciable, it cannot be direct at all. It has to be in transit. Change the direct to in transit. The transfer type is now made as in transit. Here, what happened? The receipt routing is going to be standard. The remaining are all same. So, once when you make an in transit, whenever I ship the product, it will not be visible on the destination at all. We have to make a gate receipt and then we have to make a put away. This activity is called a put away. So, make a gate receipt first and then perform a put away. Then only the stock will be visible on the destination or. Whereas in the case of a direct organization transfers, once when you perform an intro transfers, it will be immediately be visible on the destination or it will not come by a gate actually. It will not come by a gate. Any doubts? Is it clear? Can I go ahead? Yes, 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 sir. Click on OK now. Click on OK. Now the direct is not trained center in rank. And then in the right hand side top, you have to give a save and close. Remember, if you don't give a save and close, it will not be saved at all. Give a save and close in the right hand side top. Okay. Now, what happens? You go there. I will not perform an interrupt transfer. No, click on it. If you go there, click on it. I'm not going to perform an interrupt transfer. Click on it. I will not go to what inventory over you. Now, the destination org will not be visible at all. You go there. If you go and then try to perform an interrupt transfer, you go there, on it. the destination org will not be visible at all. Click on it. We will not perform what manage interorganization transfers. So from 101, the source, what happens if you drop down, the destination org will not be visible because the receiving parameter of the destination org has to be set, then only it will do. For a direct org, it doesn't come by a gate now. It doesn't touch the gate at all. Whereas an in-transit transfer, it will be coming at the gate. So the receiving parameter of the destination org is a must structure. So go there. I will not right-click and then duplicate. Right-click and then duplicate. Let me go there and then give the receiving parameter. So click on it. And then go there. So click on the setup and maintenance. So click on the setup and maintenance. And then here you click on the task list and then click on search. You will now go to the generic area of the task. It's called manage percentage fine, receiving percentage fine, para percentage. So we go to the manage receiving parameter fine. Click on this now fine. Click on that. Manage receiving parameter. Now, whatever is star, we are going to see it now. The remaining we'll be seeing it later. Whatever is star. So receipt day is exception. I will not make it as a none now. Or receipt action is what none. Receipt routing is going to be standard. Right. Generation is going to be automatic. The type is going to be numeric. The next number is let us say thousand and one thousand. Next number I given. So here the RMA is coming. Here I am now making the star. So the the star marked ones are already filled off, and I can give a save actually. Oh God, I have to be on the destination or click on change or I have to be on the destination or. <laughs> this is, I don't want it now. I click on it. I will not put what T one zero two. So for this I have to set up. 
So the destination R must have the receiving parameter set actual. Then only we can perform a transfer between the source to destination. Now this must be having the receiving parameter fine there. So I change the R to destination. Now I will now go there and then put up a right? yeah, is what so that uh, one zero two is the one fine that one. So over to the fine fine to the fine go there. Generation is going to be automatic and then it's going to be numeric and then thousand fine go there. So click on save. Because I have not saved the previous one, I everything I'm coming up. So here all the star mark is having entries now. Fine go there, click on it. So click on save and close now. Save and close by which what happens? One zero two is not set. Now, if you go there and then go there and then drop down, fine, go there. See, it's not coming actually. If I give a cancel now, and again go for the same transaction. If it is not still not coming, you have to so log out, log out and log in. You now go there again. Try to perform this. Fine, click on the create miscellaneous transaction. Go there. If it drop down, if it doesn't come, what happens? We have to log out and log in. Sorry, not this one. Sorry, not create create interop transfer. So cancel it. So I had to go for an interop transfer. So you click on it. Fine, go there. So I am in what inventory management. I click on the star icon. I click on the star icon, and then you go to the manage inventory overview, and then here what happens? You go there, perform an interop transfer, create an interop transfer. So if you drop down, if the organization is not coming, I click on search you now. I click on search, and then it will not try you now. You must see the counter. It is still not coming. What I have to do now? Oh, I am in the wrong org actually. I must be on the source org actually. <laughs> so click on the change org. I have to change the org. It's a T10 one. If it is, this will come, you just log out and log in. We got the mistake actually. So click on it. Will now make what? Manage uh, or create intro transfers. I must be on the source org. And then if you drop down the destination org as well. So for the destination org to come, the receiving parameter of the destination org must be set. Fine, go there. In the shipment, fine, go there. I'm not going to. So before which, what happens? We are now going to create a new item, and then we will now cost the product. We will not create a new item. So the third item is not on. We will now go and then create a new item, and then cost the product. Click on it. We will not create a new item. We go there. So click on it. I will now go to the product information management. <clears throat> now go there. So click on it. I will now create a new item for testing the interop transfer. Right? Zero three is a direct organization transfer, whereas zero four will be an in transit transfer. Click on it. I will now put my item class over here. Find T10. If the item class is not coming, then what I have to do now? Anybody remembering it? If this is not coming, is now coming as a blank. What I have to do? Anybody remembering it now? Determine search. Huh? Can you need to search. No, no. Search also sorry, doesn't say, say it is not coming. In the search also is not coming. Then what I have to do? Speak loudly. Then only I can hear. You no. Know. We have to remove governance and consolidation. Remember. We have to remove governance and consolidation. Please refer the previous videos now. If the item class is still not coming, you have to use what? Remove the governance and consolidation and then log out and log in now. That is the way you have to do it. So only when you keep on practicing it, it will not go into your heart now. Otherwise, it will never go into your heart. Keep on working. So we are now creating the fourth item now. The warning, I will not start to explain you later. Now, if I not know, keep on asking. The warning, I will explain you. Here, whatever is the T10, 04. I will now say IOT underscore in transit. In transit. So the item is the fourth item. It is the IOT in transit. We are testing it now. Go there. Take off it. Go there. So click on the description. And then here, I go to the specification. Come and go to the specification. In the specification on the purchasing, what happens? I am now giving what happens? $20 is the price on which I am going to buy in the market, actually. The market price. Actually. The purchase price is the market price, actually. Mm. The market price. So I go there. I will now associate. Fine, go to the associations. Let me associate to both dogs. Fine, go to the actions and go to self -nut. So let me associate this item to both dogs. The T10. And then entry now. You're going to associate to both dogs. Select from the left hand side. With the control, select the second line also. With the control, we can select both the lines. Now find the control key. We can select both the lines. Now click on apply. Now click on that. So the fourth item is now getting ready. I will now save and close. I will now perform a result of it now. I will not perform a hundred quantity result actually. Go there, I will not make a result. I click on it. I will not perform a result of it. I will not go there. So I will not. What happens? You click on the star icon. I go to the inventory overview, and then I am going to perform a result for hundred quantities actually. I will not click on it. I will not what create miscellaneous transaction on the source org. We I mean, already the source one. If I go there. So in the source, I am going to receive it now. I click on it. Drop it down. I will not choose what miscellaneous result, and then here. The offset account has to be given. I will not click on search now and then give an offset account. So we are going to give offset account. 
So, uh, which is the offset account? Nine, one not one not five, no? One not five will be an offset account. One not five is an offset. One not five is an offset. Not five. So, I will not say the use current item cost. No, I am going to cost the product at one dollar. I will not cost the product at one dollar. Frankly, my personal. I will not cost it at one dollar. The list price is ten dollars, but I am not costing it at one dollar. So, T ten zero four, and then give it up. Right, item is coming back for that one. I will not keep what in the FGS. I will not keep hundred quantities. No, I will not cost the product at one dollar. So click on the edit details. So click on edit details and then go there. Click on the edit cost details. There are two cost elements that are available here. One is an item price. One is a non-recoverable tax. So on item price, I am going to give a price of one dollar. No, fine. So the item is now getting costed for one dollars. One one dollar is the cost of the item. Fine. Click on OK. So once when I receive it, the inventory valuation will be going up by one hundred dollars. Is one dollar? I go that one. It's not done. Go that. So it's not done. If I click on submit now. The inventory valuation will now go up by hundred dollars. Your transactions process no issues. No, I go that. So this is now processed actually. You will now go there and then check the quantity. Now, if I click on it, go to the manager quantities. Then I'm going to make a check. Now say it's a T10. Right, zero four is the one. Fine, give it a tap, and then click on search. You will now find item quantity. Here it will not show you what is the cost of the product actually, and then the price of the product. Price is the buy, purchase the purchase price. Cost is the manufacturing cost. Actually, normally it will be same, but only for understanding what happens. I am now making it different. Actually, of course. <clears throat> so click on it. all that. Now we have to push this into the uh, costing area. Now, fine, go that corner. You have to push it to the costing area. So click on the star icon, and then you go to the monitor process. So this transaction has to be pushed into the costing area. Fine, go that. So click on schedule new process. It is called transfer transactions. Now, right? now say. Transfer transactions from inventory to costing. So transfer transactions from inventory to costing is the one. Fine, give a tap. So once when you give a tap, the whole ESS job will be coming. It is called enterprise scheduler services job. Fine, give a tap. So the transfer transaction from inventory to costing is coming. Fine, click on OK. Now we are going to transfer it to costing. So the cost organization is what T10, and then give a tap. And remember, this is an average costing organization. And we have created yesterday a new item. We have overridden the average with the standard costing that we have seen yesterday. How to override the organization's costing method from standard average cost to standard cost. Right? Click on submit. So now whatever has been transacted on this cost org, everything will be pushed into the interface tables of whatever is the cost accounting. Right? Click on submit. It will all be pushed into the interface tables of cost. Account. So uh, go there and then click on the refresh icon. It will be refreshing it. And then you can even search on my number. No, fine, your number again. Only minimal things will be visible here. No, fine, click on search. Only minimal visible. This is only visible now. So once when this completed, now succeeded. Now we will now pull it to the base tables. Now I'm going to pull it to the base tables. So I will now right click and then duplicate. We are going to pull it to the base tables. Always duplicate, duplicate, and then create new new tab region and then do it now. So click on it. I will now go to the cost overview, costing overview. Let me pull it to the base table. Now go there. So go there. I am now into the costing over you. Fine. Click on the task list. And then here, we'll now go there. Click on the create cost accounting distributions. So click on the create cost accounting distributions by which what happens we are now going to get a cost accounting distribution for this. So the run control name is starting with the T10 now. Fine. Click on it. So T10 is the one. And then make a search. It will be coming over here. Now. So everything has been fully set actually. We have already set everything there while we are doing the average costing of the first product. now. So click on it. I will now click on the schedule process. So whatever has now reached the interface tables of costing will be pulled into that, what's called the base tables. Scheduling process, it is not having, fine. Once when you're pulling it from the inventory into the costing area, it is asking you the cost org name as a parameter. When you're performing what, the cost distributions, no parameters are required, thank you for something. Whatever has reached on the interface tables, everything will be pulled into the base tables actually. And if you go to the monitor process, you have over it, fine, what happens? Now, this create cost accounting distribution is now running. So one when this runs, the item will be costed at one dollar. You can very well see the cost of the product is one dollar actually. So the cost of the product will be coming as one dollar one when this is completed actually. There's no running, running, running. So we'll wait for the con concurrent or ESS are one and the same concurrent job, and then ESS job are all one and the same actually. So the ESS job is running now. So once when it is completed, you can now see the cost of the product changing to what one dollar. It's no running. Go there. So, no so while running itself, we will not make a check. Man. We will go to the create cost accounting distribution. Click on save and close now. We will now review the item cost. So now you see the cost has gone from 33k to 34k actually. 
hundred dollars has gone in now. Thirty-four thousand actually. How come thirty-four thousand has come? Oh God. Maybe some we are making some standard costing organization of that item because of which it has now gone. So if this is completed, it will be thirty-four point one k. It will become thirty-four point one k. If you refresh it, what happens now? It, till yesterday, along with the standard costing item, what happens now? That so if you refresh it, it will be thirty-four point one k because this item is also coming. It will be thirty-four point one k now. So we had to wait for the monitor process to complete offering. So we had to wait for it. So create cost accounting distribution still running. So there's only hundred dollars now. Fine. So once when hundred dollars comes in on the infolet page, this is called the infolet page. The cost, the total inventory valuation will now go by hundred more. So thirty-four thousand one hundred is what thirty-four thirty-four point one actually. Now wait for it to complete now. So cost accounting distribution still running. So in a big program. It will be running for approximately two minutes now. Fine. We had to wait for this to get completed actually. Is it all clear till now? Whatever I told. Yes. Yeah, only thing is you must have time to practice now. Fine. That is the only thing which is now a big. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. When are they giving you the instance? Any news on this now? No news, sir. Eh? Not yet, sir. So now what happens is now running the Subbit Financial Orchestration event is now running. Maybe once when it runs, what happens? The item gets costed. The inventory valuation will be updated. Actually, you go there, click on it. So if you refresh it, refresh it. It has to become thirty-four point one. Now, when you click on refresh, now, does it become thirty-four point one? We got it. It does not become thirty-four point one. We'll now go there and then look at the item cost. Now, when you click on it, we'll now go to the review item cost and then query for the item cost. Now, item starts with and what that is the T ten point zero four. And then click on search. You'll now find hundred quantity that one dollar. The item cost is one dollar, right? So the item cost is one dollar. Now, out of hundred quantities, I am going to transfer some twenty quantities from the first stock to second stock, right? I will now perform what a transfer, right? So we are now going to perform what a transfer from the first stock to second stock, right? So first stock to second stock, we are going to perform a transfer through the in transit transfers, right? Through in transit transfers. And then we will now cost the product also. So through a miscellaneous result, normally what happens is we won't perform a miscellaneous result in the industry. Right? So what you will do is you will now manufacture it. You will now manufacture it and then bring it to the sub industry. Or we will now buy it from a supplier. Right? We will now bring it. <laughs> miscellaneous result is only for what? <coughs> is a stock adjustment. Right? But since we are ready to see the, uh, what happens, the purchasing as well as manufacturing, so we are performing miscellaneous result. So, we have performed and then we have updated our inventory valuation. So, normally it will be bought and then brought into the inventory, or otherwise it is manufactured and then brought into the inventory. So, make or otherwise buy are the two activities through which what happens, it will be coming into this area. You got it now? Now, what happens, you give it a no. So, we will now perform what? It is all completed now. We will now perform an intra transfer right? with the source to organization destination. And click on it. So, click on the star icon. I am not clicking on the star icon. I go to the inventory overview. I am not going to go to the inventory overview. I click on it. I will not click on it. And then here, what happens? I will not. What happens? I create an intro transfer. So click on the create intro transfer. So when the source to destination, if it drop down, it will come because we have already given what the receiving parameter of the destination or. And then if you go there, and then the shipment number, I will not say uh, one thousand five some number. So whenever a material is now moving on the road, what happens? You will have an intro shipment number written on the delivery chalon, and then the delivery chalon will be given to the driver actually. So we are going to load it, and then we can even what happens? The calculate the cost of loading also. Loading cost we can even manufacture in the manufacturing. We can make a loading. We can uh, run a job for loading it, and then similarly for unloading also, we can very well calculate the cost of unloading it. <clears throat> So the loading and unloading cost can also be calculated and then it can be accounted actually. But here we are not very much bothered. But we are bothered about the movement of material from the source to destination or through an in-transit route through which whatever. There's so many accounts will be hit actually. Plenty of accounts are going to be hit. We'll now go there and then go in. And then go there. So we can even generate the shipment number automatically or otherwise you can manually write. So click on the plus and then I will now put the fourth item over here. Go there. So we got T10 and then 04 and then if you give a tap, it will not show you available quantity as 100. No, thank you, beta. It will not show the available quantity as 100 because 100 has been received now. Thank you, it. Drop it down. I will not choose what FGS. And then it is now moving at a $1 price to the destination, actually. 
I will not, I'm not going to the one dollar price. In the eighty details, I am not giving any shipping cost. No. The shipping cost, I am not putting it up. Eh? The transit is not very important actually. It is basically the freight charges, the packing, the transit insurance fine. I am not giving any shipping charges. In any details, what happens? We had to only give what the shipping charges, not the item cost number. Shipping charges, I am not giving it. Thank you, answer. So let me move some twenty quantities from this place. Right? The quantity is twenty. So now I am not going to move twenty quantities from this place to this place. So now tell me. When I perform this transfer, I will not perform this, complete the transfer actually. So item 20 quantities at a price of $1, at the cost of $1 is now moving towards the destination or fine, click on submit. I'm not giving a submit, now fine, click on it. I'm not submitting it. So the transfers is now complete, fine, click on this, the transaction process. So it is now going with the intro transfer number of 1005, remember, 1005. I will not go there and then look at the stock, now fine, click on it. I will not go to the manage item quantities. I'm already on 101, fine, because I will not put what? T1004, fine. The T1004, and then give a tap. It will be coming out. If you make a search, how much will be the stock in the source organization? Anybody? What will be the stock in the source? We have already moved 20 to the destination. Fine. It is not on the way. It has not reached the place. No, it has not reached the place. And it is on the way, actually. It has not left the source, but it is on the way. It is called in transit shipment, actually. It is on the way. If you give a search, what will be the stock? Anybody? Make a guess now. Initially, we received 100. Now, we moved 20 from this place. So, what will be the stock? Move? So, click on search. It will be 80 actually. It will be 80. So, out of 100 which has been received by a miscellaneous reserve, 20 is now moved to the destination or it will be there. If you go there and then click on it, and then if you change the R to 102 and then make a search. So, will it show the 20 or not? Is my question. Click on search. Will it show the 20 or not? Now, it has left the source, but it has not even reached the gate. And then it is not yet put away actually. Will it show me 20 or not? Anybody? If we make a search, will it not show the 20 or not in the destination or the org is changed? It, yes, will not show anything not. it will not show anything at all. <laughs> because it is in on the way actually. Madras to Bombay, the vehicle is moving. So only when it reaches Bombay and then make a gate receipt as well as you perform a put away, then only it will be visible on the destination or. Got it now, fine. So it is not visible at all. So now let us go to the destination org and then receive it. Fine. Now right click and then duplicate. We are going to receive it actually. So it has been shipped from the source org. Now it is on the way. And then I will now go to the destination org and then perform a gate receipt. We are going to make a gate receipt. Click on it. I will now click on the star icon. I will now go to the inventory overview. You know, fine. Click on the inventory overview. And then I am going to perform a receipt. First of all, I had to change the org to my destination. Click on it. I will now what? Drop down and then go to the results now. Previously, we are only in the inventory now. So we are now going to the results now. Fine, click on the results. We are now going to the results. Fine, click on the receive expected shipments from the source or fine, click on the receive expected shipments on the source or receive expected shipments on the source or fine, go there. So the in transit number now, fine, in transit shipment number. Anybody is remembering it? It is 1001 or 1002. What is the number now? Anybody remembering the number now? 10, if I give it 100. Now it is now all now fine. So now what happens? Uh, the data access is also not there. So first of all, we had to have a data access. Then only the change org will come. So we will now give a data access first of all. Give it on now fine. The data access to be given. Click on the now. So go there. It is not the one now fine. Give it app. Remove it. Click on. So the data access has to be given. So then only we can receive on the destination or we'll now go there. Right click and then duplicate. We are now going to get, get data access. Click on. So let us now go there and then perform a data access. So click on it. We'll now go to the setup and maintenance. Will not perform a setup and maintenance plan. Go that one. Setup and maintenance is one fine. Go that one. Will not click on it. I will not go to the search. No fine. Go that. Manage data access. So we we'll go to the manage data access for users. No fine. Click on it. And then I will not see. I will not change the radio button from users without data access to users with data access. The username is what T10. And then give it app. It will be coming fully. Fine. Click on search. No. It will not show all the data access. So here, what happens? We don't have any. Receiving manager data access actually. So we will now give two things. One is the receiving manager, and then for delivery, we need a warehouse manager. For receiving it to the gate, we have a receiving manager data access. And then for delivering it, what happens? We need a uh, what happens? Warehouse manager data access. So then only we can receive it in the gate as well as we can perform a put away. This activity is called a put away. So to perform a put away into the inventory or we need a warehouse manager data access. So receiving manager and then the warehouse manager data access, I'm going to give it for the second or for this time. So click on class. Click on class. I will not go there. Click on it. The username is what T10. 
Fine. Data access is user specific access. I will not say receiving or you see and then give a tab now. Fine. Be coming. So receiving agent fine. Brother. So it is for the inventory or no fine. Click on it. No problem. Inventory or it is for the destination or e ten two no. So we are given it. And then we will now give for warehouse manager also. Fine. There is a duplicate icon. Fine. Click on the duplicate icon and then duplicate it actually. We are not duplicating it actually. Click on the duplicate icon and then we are duplicating it. So the line is now getting duplicated. Go there. Here, whatever that I will not make it to the what? Warehouse manager. Warehouse manager. <clears throat> of the inventory all. And then I will not give it. So I will not put the second one. So with these two data access, fine. The receiving agent and then the warehouse all. Receiving agent will not facilitate you to receive in the game. The warehouse manager will now make you to put away into the inventory or. So receiving and put away are two activities which have to perform on the destination or fine. So we are given the data access for both for the second or for this user actually. So the data access is user specific actually. If I click on seven two as well, I completed. So click on done, come on away now. And then here, whatever you go to the manager and put on the So here in this place, not this one. Now go to the inventory or fine. So let us now perform a receipt now. So click on it. And then here, what happens? You go to the uh, receive expected shipments. Fine, go there. The change org has to come. So the change org is not coming. Then what I have to do now? I given the red access. It's still not coming. What I have to do? Anybody? Come on. It is a very simple one now. Whenever something which has been done is not visible, what I have to do now? In the receive expected shipments. What happens? It's not showing us all actually. So we are given what receiving agent actually, but it is not coming. So what I have to do? Come on, it's a very simple one. Log out and log in now. You should not forget it now. Fine. Whenever any setup is not visible on the transactional systems, you please sign out and sign in now. Sign out. Then what happens? You close all of the tab which is all the tab which is I'm going to close. Close it and go there. Click on it. I will now close it and go there. I will now close it and go there. Click on manage it. No close everything. I will not sign in. So we are signing in. So once when something is not visible, what happens? You go there. Now we click on this star icon. I go to the inventory overview and go to the inventory overview. So in the inventory overview, what happens? You go there. I will not drop down to the receiving agent. Fine. Drop down and then go to the receipts. Now find receipts. And then here, receive expected shipments. Then if you go there, now what happens? You'll now find a change or coming in. So here, there is no need to change at all. Only one org is there because we are given the receiving agent only for one org. So we cannot change also. If we try to even change, what happens? Nothing will happen. It dropped out. We have got only uh, receiving access only for one org actually. So, go there. so click on it. So there is already there. I go there. Come on. Now organization is there. Fine. Receive expected shipments. Go there. So anybody remembering the in-transit number it is now starting on one zero. Nobody is remembering it. If you give a tab, it will be coming automatically. You get that. It will show you 1005. So when I transferred it from the source to destination, I have given the in-transit shipment number as 1005. So that is available for receipt over here. Click on search. If you click on search, what happens? It will be, it will be available. So select the line and then click on receive. We are going to receive it now. Click on receive. Select the line. You go to receive it now. So we are now making a gate receipt actually. So go there. So sub inventories cannot be given because it's a gate receipt actually. So once when you perform a gate receipt, what happens? It will be on the receiving section actually. It will be on the receiving section. Your GRN number, your goods receipt note number will be getting generated. So click on create receipt. So by which order was that? GRN number gets created. So go there. You must enter the quantity actually. From there. So I will not click on the show receipt quantity. It will not show you how much is coming from the space line orders. When you click on the show quantity, it will not show the quantity. And click on the create receipt. So once when you create receipt, what happens? And then you can even put the packing slip number as 123. And then the shipping method, if it's available, and the number of units packing, fine, go there. the label number. Fine. These are all what happens? The value addition. And then if it is always recommended to give this, not fine. Jingi account, I'm giving it. So once when you give it, later on when the management analyzes the GRN, they will now see what is the packing slip number, how many units have come, all these things they can see later on. Even though they are not mandatory actually. So click on submit by which what happens that the GRN number will be getting created for a 1005 shipment number. Now. I click on submit. So by which the shipment number is 1005, a GRN number will be created as 1001 actually. So click on it. Now, if you go there and then have a look at the stock, if I click on the now, you know, go there and then have a look at the stock. So once when you go on and look at the stock, what happens? It will not show you, but it will not show you in a different fashion. If I click on the star icon, you go to the inventory overview, and go to the inventory overview, and then here, what happens? You go there, go to the item quantities now. You go to the inventory and then look at the item quantities now. Manage item quantities, we go there. I will not say I am in the destination or only. I will not put the item over here. Fine. T1002 and then give a tab now. The item will be coming. Oh, sorry. T10. 
four now. Okay, zero four. Now you would have T one zero zero four. If you give a search, there won't be any stop at all. But if you include the receiving here also, now it is lying in the receiving actually. Okay, now search now. It will not show you that what happens. Item is there in the receiving, but not on the inventory actually. So it has been received and then it is lying in the receiving section actually. This is called the receiving section. The item is available there. So once when you perform or put away, this will now move to the on hand actually. So it is in the receiving. So once when you are searching for it, along with the receiving tick mark, it is not showing you. Fine, click on the now. It will not perform or put away actually. Click on the star icon and again go there. Then go to this place and click on it. You will not go to what? You go to the inventory receipts now. Fine, go to the receipts. In the receipts, what happens? You go to the put away receipts. Yeah, put away receipt will now put into the inventory actually. From the receiving section, it will now pick it up and then put away in the inventory. Now, click on it. Put away. Now, anybody can tell me the GR number? What is the GR number? It is 1005 or 1001. What is the GR number? Anybody? What is the GR number for this now? 1005 is a shipment number. 1005 is a shipment number. This is a shipment number. Fine. This is 1005. If you put 10 and then give it a it will be coming. Whereas GR number is what? 1001. When you made a gate receipt, we received it as a GR number is 1001. Remember, Frank click on search now. Fine. Again, even search only on one. Frank click on search. So we normally search only on one parameter. Frank click on search. And then go there, it will be coming. Select it and then perform a put away now. Frank click on put away. Put away into your sub inventory now. Frank click on search. Put away. We are now going to put away into your sub inventory. Frank go there. So the sub inventory is already coming because while performing the transfers itself, we told that what happens, you keep it on this place. But now the inventory in charge feels that it is already overloaded. So he will now override the recommendation of the in transit. You know, say I don't keep it, I don't keep it on the sub -inventor. So he has got the power to override the IOT recommendations now. When IOT is performed to the source, they have recommended to keep it on the FGS, but now while receiving it in Bombay, when from Madras they have shipped it in the Bombay. The Bombay man is saying that your FGS is not having sufficient space, he can override the recommendation of the source or and then click on submit by which what happens, it will be going into this area. So the put away transaction is created, and then now what happens if you go and then have a look at the stock? The stock will now reflect. What the 20 quantities. So go there. So click on what? I will now go to the inventory organization. Fine, go there, click on it. I am now in one not two. Fine, go there. Change it to inventory and then click on the manage item quantities. We can very well see the stock. The T10. Fine. Zero four is the get that. Go there, click on. So click on search. The one hand is come. In the receiving, it has come to the one hand. So this completes the internal transfers. Now we are going to see the accounting part of it now after a cup of tea. Clear now. You can say yes to me. So we are going to have a 10 minutes break. So it is now what happens at 3 uh, We will now come back at 3.15. You can go for a coffee and come back now. Fine. By 3.15 p.m. we will now start the next session. Is it clear? By 3.15 p.m. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. I will now stop the recording. Stop the recording.